Welcome to the complete story of Final Fantasy VII Remake Episode Intermission. A DLC episode dedicated to Yuffie Kizaragi and her mission in Midgar, whose events run parallel to the events of the main game. Aside from the controversy surrounding DLC in general, and the fact that this particular episode was made exclusive to the PlayStation 5, Episode Intermission has received some raving reviews for its gameplay and graphics. And here we are to celebrate its story. I'm Peter from Birds of Play, and in this video I hope you'll join me for a retelling of Yuffie's bite-sized ninja adventure. Chapter 1 Wutai's Finest Our story begins as a young girl dressed in a Mughal cape scopes out the city of Midgar, before getting distracted by a group of wandering pigeons, causing her to plummet clumsily off the edge of a tall concrete block. For most, falling from such a height would almost certainly be lethal, but halfway down the girl regains her bearings and manages to land with a certain degree of confidence and grace, at least before the roof she lands on caves in from under her, robbing her of the little face she had managed to save. The girl then theatrically proclaims her name to be Yuffie, a trained ninja from the far-off country of Wutai, sent to Midgar to infiltrate the Shinra company and steal their ultimate materia with the aid of the resistance group known as Avalanche. Much to Yuffie's dismay, however, there is no one around to hear her rousing performance. Even though she was expecting a member of Avalanche to meet up with her wearing a similar Mughal-inspired outfit. Upon investigating her surroundings, Yuffie notices a poster featuring a Mughal with an arrow painted on it, and quickly deduces that she must follow the trail of the posters in order to meet up with her new comrade in the fight against Shinra. On the way, Yuffie encounters three strange men, all of them dressed in the same tattered black robes with numbered tattoos on their shoulders. She tries to help them, but they ignore her completely. Once Yuffie finally makes her way to the Sector 7 slums, she is greeted by a news broadcast featuring Scarlet, the head of weapons development at Shinra, attempting to reassure the populace that everything is alright, and they need not worry about the recent bombing attacks of Macro Reactors 1 and 5. Hearing this, Yuffie becomes impressed by the exploits of Avalanche, even though she believes that she herself can do much better. As she stands there, gloating about Midgar's misfortunes, she is approached by a stranger holding a familiar Mughal cap, signaling to her that he is with Avalanche and that he has been expecting her. The man introduces himself as Shiji and leads Yuffie back to one of Avalanche's hideouts, where Yuffie meets Billy Bob, Poke, and Nayo. And this time around, Yuffie has an audience for her self introduction. Sonon Kusakabe, the ninja from Wutai that Yuffie was meant to meet up with, however, appears to be out on the town. While Yuffie waits, she treats her new friends to a Wutaian delicacy, the Chao Beans, almost getting them to break their teeth as they attempt to bite through this particularly hard bean. Shiji then heads out to pick up Yuffie's ID, insisting he can handle it alone. When Sonon finally returns, Yuffie scolds him for his tardiness. Sonon, however, appears somewhat amused by the young ninja's spunk as he tells her that she's nothing like her father, Godo Kisaragi, who Sonon had the privilege to train under. Yuffie isn't thrilled to hear her father mentioned and promptly ignores it, in favor of continuing to scold Sonon, this time for indulging in adult pastimes in Midgar. After Yuffie is finished ranting, Sonon strikes a ninja pose and calls Yuffie boss telling her he is looking forward to working with her. Yuffie appears surprised at the respect he shows her, but Sonon explains that even though he has a few years on her in terms of age, Yuffie has been a practicing ninja for longer than him, making her his senior. Without warning, Yuffie's mortal enemy the Pigeon flies into the hideout with a message about counterfeited train passes. So Yuffie and Sonon join Nayo for a stroll to pick them up. On their way through the slums, Yuffie encounters a splinter cell of Avalanche, led by Barrett Wallace, as they return home from a bombing mission, apparently one man short. 
Yuffie wants to go say hello to the people responsible for causing Shinra so much grief, but Sonon advises against it, telling her it's safer for them to keep their distance. As they make their way to a more dangerous part of town, the party runs into three goons, and their leader proposes that Nayo come with them in order to become one of Don Corneo's brides. Yuffie takes offense to being overlooked, even though she's only 16. As the thugs attempt to drag Naya away by force, Sonon and Yuffie interfere and promptly kick their asses. Instead of coming back for seconds, the men run after hearing about another prospect for Don Corneo's bride, leaving the threesome alone to go about their business. As Yuffie, Sonon and Naya wait for the counterfeiter to arrive, they spot another man in black robes, and Naya explains to Yuffie that he's suffering from Marco poisoning and that he's another victim of Shinra. This enrages Yuffie and reinforces her vendetta against Shinra even further. As the counterfeiter arrives, he presents them with two interplate ID cards that would allow the ninjas to ride the train to the upper plate. As they start to make their way back, they are intercepted by another pigeon with a message from Shiji, telling them to go to the pillar. On the way there, they run into Shiji himself running away from some security officers, and give chase. When they finally catch up with them, Yuffie reminds Sonon that she's the leading lady, before performing her most theatrical self-introduction yet, discarding her Mughal cape and in the process revealing her ninja gear. As Yuffie and Sonon rush in to rescue Shiji, they are forced to do battle with the mechanical gigantipede as the security officers request backup before turning tail and running away. Proving their true ninja battle prowess, the two of them beat the robot back before being reunited with Shiji. He rewards them with employee IDs that will get them into the Shinra building itself, including access to the basement where material research is being conducted. Yuffie and Sonon say their goodbyes to Shiji and go cast the train to the Shinra building located on the upper plate. Nayo, Billy Bob and Poke mix in with the rest of the crowd in order to see them off. On the train, Yuffie suffers from motion sickness, coming very close to vomiting on the floor of the train car. Sonon uses this opportunity to reminisce about his younger sister Melfi, who also used to get motion sickness, whether it was riding chocobos, boats, and most likely trains as well. Sonon discloses to Yuffie that Melfi was also a student of her father's before getting tragically killed at the end of the war between Shinra and Wutai. Upon hearing this, Yuffie agrees with Sonon that Shinra deserves what's coming to them, but resents him for thinking of her as his little sister. Chapter 2 Covert Ops At the top of the Shinra building, President Shinra, Heidegger, Head of Public Safety, and Reeve Tuesti head of urban development, argue about whether or not to drop the Sector 7 plate in a false flag operation against Avalanche. Reeve, knowing that he can't persuade them not to drop the plate, urges them to at least issue a warning, but his pleas fall on deaf ears, the president reminding him that progress requires sacrifice. As Yuffie and Sonon enter the Shinra building, they are met with a barrage of news reporters trying to get comments from Shinra regarding rumors that Sector 7 will be the next target of terrorist activity. The two of them take advantage of the chaos to sneak into an elevator unseen using the ID cards they acquired earlier. Just when they think they're home free, Scarlet enters the elevator. Suspecting foul play, Scarlet attempts to bait Yuffie by demeaning Wu Tai, but Yuffie manages to resist her impulses to answer back. After exiting the elevator, Scarlet activates a barrier so that Yuffie and Sonon can't pursue her, telling them that foreigners should take the scenic route and savor the opportunity to meet their latest autonomous weapons. With Scarlet gone, Sonon curses himself for letting her go, since he'll never get a better chance for revenge against the woman that created the machine responsible for killing his sister. Yuffie reminds him of the mission, and Sonon regains his senses apologizing for his outburst. Yuffie and Sonon take Scarlet's detour head-on and make their way to the research facility, 
all the while being monitored by Scarlet, in order to find out what they want. As Yuffie gets more and more frustrated with her predicament, they make their way through what seems like an endless maze of underground corridors. Sonon suggests that they take a little break, and asks her for a Dachao bean. Having been disappointed with the response to this Wu Taiyan delicacy in her visit to Midgar so far, Yuffie finds it surprising and comforting that Sonon is able to stomach it. Having calmed down a little, Yuffie discovers the way forward, and the two of them make it to the Materia Research Facility. There, Scarlet greets them with a hologram, inviting them to sample some of her weapons, before Scarlet herself finally faces them in person, equipped with a newly developed battle armor. When Scarlet inevitably loses the fight, she presses a small button hidden on her thigh. Unbeknownst to Yuffie and Sonon, Scarlet has just awakened something deep underground, below the headquarters of Shinra. Far below them, a small chamber opens up, letting out Nero the Sable. Upon exiting the chamber, Nero is greeted by Weiss the Immaculate, who is in the process of being digitally replicated by a group of scientists. Although Nero is skeptical about their prospects of success, Nero, however, has his own work cut out for him, as his hunt has just begun. While all of this is going on, Yuffie and Sonon interrogate Scarlet about the new materia, which only leads Scarlet to deduce that Shinra has a mole in its midst. The information, however, isn't strictly accurate, since the new materia hasn't been completed yet, meaning that Yuffie and Sonon can complete their mission. As a consolation prize, Scarlet nevertheless divulges the information that Shinra is going to drop the Sector 7 plate, and blame it on Avalanche and Wu Tai. Sonon goes to secure the perimeter, but when he runs into problems, Yuffie is forced to abandon Scarlet and to go fight at his side. Together they take on deep ground soldiers summoned by Scarlet, which proved to be a lot harder to deal with than the run of the mill security officers they had faced earlier. Before the fight is finished, Yuffie and Sonon get trapped in a battle simulator, and as Scarlet approaches with Nero in tow, she changes the settings on the machine, so that the pain sensation is set at its maximum level. The rest she leaves to Nero, and as he waits outside the room, he kills time by torturing and murdering his fellow Deep Ground members, devouring them with his darkness. After beating the simulation, Yuffie and Sonon escape the frying pan into the fire, as Nero is there waiting for them. All the while, some scientists monitor the fight in order to collect data on Nero and his capabilities. When Nero breaks free of his shackles, however, he assaults the scientists for standing in his way before getting back to fighting Yuffie and Sonon. A fight the ninjas ultimately emerge victorious from. Having seemingly beaten Nero, the two of them make their escape. As they make their way to the door, however, Sonon senses something is off, and notices Nero's attack targeting Yuffie from behind. He jumps in to save her, all the while being reminded of his failure to save his sister. This time around, he manages to get Yuffie out of harm's way, albeit at a great cost, as he himself suffers the force of the attack and gets impaled repeatedly. In his last moments, Sonon sees a vision of his sister offering him a Dachao bean, but he has become too weak to bite through it. Spikes thrust violently out from within his body, and as he falls to the ground, a pair of hands emerge from the darkness and drag him into it. Yuffie escapes the Shinra building crying, scolding Sonon for treating her like a kid and thinking of her as his little sister. There is, however, little comfort to be had, as she is welcomed back into the outside world by the sight of the Sector 7 plate falling down in the slums below, causing untold destruction and death. Yuffie falls to her knees and screams at the top of her lungs at the world, as the embers from the falling plate rise up into the sky. When the dust settles, Yuffie leaves Midgar on a chocobo, having reclaimed her happy-go-lucky attitude, at least on the surface. Exclaiming to the now clear blue sky that she can't do this alone, and that she's looking for a team to take on the world together. Somewhere else, the avalanche splinter cell composed of Barrett and Tifa 
in addition to Cloud, Aerith and Red 13, is also leaving Midgar behind. Barrett intends to walk all the way over to the next town, but thankfully they're able to hitch a ride from Chocobo Bill, even though Barrett might not agree that Chocobos are the best company in small enclosed spaces. Chocobo Bill leaves them at the nearest intersection before calm, saving them quite the journey, even though they have to walk the rest of the way themselves in the rain. Back in Midgar, outside the church where Cloud first met Aerith, a face from the past is lurking around the entrance, as Zack Fair is seen trying to find the perfect words for his reunion with Aerith. As he finally musters up the courage to open the door, however, what awaits him isn't Aerith, but rather a crowd of people, presumably seeking shelter after the collapse of the Sector 7 plate. And that is the story of Final Fantasy VII Remake Episode Intermission. Hello everyone, it's me, Nuck with the other one. Thanks for listening to the complete story of Final Fantasy VII Remake Episode Intermission. I hope you liked the video as much as we liked the DLC. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video, leave us a comment, maybe even click that bell. But until next time, I think we're just going to leave you with our signature bird sounds. <laughs>